Thanks for stopping by CSEC Biology V cover page. Today we're going to be looking at the January 2020 Human and Social Biology Paper 2. Particularly question number one where we're going to explore the food web and the pyramid of biomass. So stay with me and let's go places. Please be reminded to like, share and of course subscribe. Most of all, subscribe and click that notification bell and select to be notified at all time. In that way, you will have access to all my videos on your favorite topics and, of course, subjects. Let's get right into the lesson. Section A. Answer all questions in this section. The table below shows the sources of energy for several organisms. And the table is divided into two sides with organisms on one and the source of energy on the other. The organisms are blackbird, mangoes, mouse, and of course, hawk. Now, source of energy would include seeds, fruits, insects. That's a diet for the blackbird. Then we have the solar energy, which is converted to a simple sugar and that's for the mango tree and for the mouse the mouse is having seeds and grass while the hawk is having mice and of course bird now from the table above identify the organisms which is a producer now the producers are usually autotrophic organisms and they can range from microscopic organism to pretty large uh, organism like a mango tree. So we could have for our food web in our exam a uh, phytoplankton or algae. But in this case, our producer is going to be the mango tree because it is using the energy from the sun to make that simple sugar. Herbivores are usually the primary consumer on your food chain or food web and they are eating plants only. So in this case, it is the mouse which is feeding on the seed and the grass, not the blackbird because the blackbird is feeding on insects and insects are pretty much animals. And of course, not the ark because mice and bird, they are both animals. So the most suitable answer here is going to be the mouse. Carnivore. To be a carnivore, the organism must eat plant only. Hence a blackbird would not fit in this category as it is eating seeds. Neither would the mouse as the mouse is eating plants only, seed and grass. So uh, answer here is going to be the hawk that is eating mice and bird. Then we look at omnivore most times not captured in the food chain but the omnivore refers to organisms that are eating both plants and animal or plants and meat in this case the blackbird is the omnivore because it is eating both plants and animal we're seeing that the blackbird here eating seeds fruit and insects and insects are of course a source of meat or an animal. State the process by which energy enters the food chain. Now energy enters the living world through the process of photosynthesis where the plants use the chlorophyll in the leaf to trap the sunlight and converts this in energy from the sun into a simple sugar with the aid of water and of course carbon dioxide now we're also supposed to identify how the energy leaves the food chain and it leaves the food chain by the process of respiration now all the organisms in a food chain would be respiring so, of course, they'll be losing some amount of energy. However, it is the producer, the first trophic level of your food chain, that is, of course, responsible for photosynthesis. Figure 1 is a biomass pyramid, which shows the availability of energy 
and the number of organisms at each trophic level in a food chain. Be reminded that each organism in a food chain represents a trophic level. So if we're supposed to look at this pyramid from the top, or better yet, from the bottom, you'd realize that we started out with a primary producer, then we have primary consumer, secondary consumer, and we moved on up to tertiary consumer. There's something that stands out here, however, is that we are realizing here that we had 25,000 or 25 million uh, primary uh, producer, and by the time we get to primary consumer, it would have been reduced. So you are seeing the number there, not so clear on the screen. It seems to be 25 million, uh, 600,000, something there. Uh, probably you will see it better if you were supposed to access the actual paper. But one thing we know for sure is that the amount of organism is reducing as we move through successive uh, trophic level. So too, the amount of energy here available in joules is reducing as we move up the food chain. Let's see what the question wants us to look at. State two trends that are observed when moving from the base of a biomass pyramid to the top. Moving up the pyramid, the available energy reduced at each trophic level. That's just one thing. Moving up the pyramid, the number of organisms reduced at each trophic level. That's two trends we have identified. Moving up the pyramid, the energy dependency change at each trophic level. So organisms are feeding on different things. The herbivore, they are feeding on the plant, the carnivore, they are feeding on, of course, other animals, that type of thing. There is a 10% reduction in the available energy at each trophic level. So you could use any of these two. We were only asked for two, but we gave four. So any two of the four you can use. Let's look at the other question. At which trophic level is the least amount of energy available? Now, that's going to be the fourth trophic level. And it's set in the rule as we move from producer up to tertiary or quaternary consumer, you are going to find that the energy is being reduced by about 10%. So by the time we get to the third or fourth or fifth trophic level, tertiary consumer or quaternary consumer, you will realize that there is not enough energy to sustain life. So just one reason why this food chain has four trophic level only the available energy would not be enough to sustain life as it significantly reduced as it moved away from producer to consumer this is a graph and most persons having seen a graph this would be a question that they would not do or would not prefer to do but this is pretty easy and i'm going to walk you through it figure to illustrate the percentage of nutrient in 100 gram of beef versus 100 grams of soya bean. Now there we have some bars and these bars, they would have been streaked, cross hatched, are pretty much nicely identified and we're seeing that this is uh, the, the price there is also outlined for both products with a one dollar plus for the beef and about eight cent or less than eight cent for the soya bean so it's the same there zero point zero eight dollars per hundred gram of soya while for beef it is one dollar uh, four cent per hundred gram all right, please be reminded to look at the actual paper. It's a little blurred here, but the answers are indeed correct. So we want to look at what is required of us. World hunger is on the increase 
with millions of people not having enough food to eat. Identify which food, soya, beans, or beef, would be more suitable to meet the needs of millions of hungry people. State two reasons for your answer. Now, to get my reasons, I am going to look at the table. And when I look at this graph, you realize that the cost of soya bean is way less than the cost of beef. Again, you would realize here that the nutrient available in soya bean, it is much greater than that which is available in beef. So for that reason, we could say that the cost, soya bean has a better cost, so to a better nutrient content. So soya beans would be more suitable to meet the needs of millions of hungry people. The reasons, soya bean is cheaper than beef per 100 grams. Soya beans have a higher nutrient content as is seen on the graph. So there, all we needed to do is like multiple choice just to look at the graph and the answer would have just popped out at us. Now, this is a question that actually uh, would have troubled a lot of persons, such as one reason why beef has significantly lower levels of calcium and protein compared to soya bean. Well, the first thing we need to know is that beef in itself would not be carrying any calcium. The calcium would have been in the bones and it's trapped in the bone where we would not be able to access it unless the bone were to be grinded or crushed to powder. That is not happening. We also know that the beef would have significantly more water uh, per gram than would have been the soya bean. However, naturally, the soya bean has more protein packed in with less water, so there's more space for protein than there would have been for the beef. And we also know that naturally, the soya bean would have had calcium as part of a nutrient available in this plant. Now, beef has more water and fat, as is stated here. The calcium would have been trapped in the bones, not the meat. The soya, as a special plant, this is not uh, typical for all plants, naturally has less water and is packed with more protein and calcium from the soil. So naturally, this is a true statement that soya bean would carry more protein than the actual beef. And one other thing that we could look at is that the soya bean has a greater dry mass content than does the beef. Please be reminded to like, share, and of course subscribe and click that notification bell and make sure you select that you want all the notification so that when we release a video each day, you will have your copy. Also, please be reminded to join us on a Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday at 5.05 p.m for live classes and we're streaming from Kingston, Jamaica. Thanks much for watching January 2020 Human and Social Biology paper question number one.